This is Jack Moman, and today is the 2nd of July, 2011. We're in Providence, Rhode Island for the 2011 annual ATOS convention. And during this convention, we're trying to talk with as many of the theater organ notables as we can, and we found Juan Cardona in the hallway and invited him up. He's a very accomplished organist. From, comes to us from around the Connecticut area, uh, attends most of the conventions, and and just an all-around nice guy, if you will. Uh, okay, Juan, why don't you tell us how you got started in, in music? I got started in music uh, at the age of five. Um, growing up, there was always music in my household. Uh, my mom was a church organist, and... Um, Prior to me being born, my father had built her a Schober recital organ from a kit, including doing, built the console himself. So since I can remember as a little kid, there's always been an organ in the house and there's always been music. Um, and my, my folks were also part of an organ group that they always got together on a regular basis with. So there was always parties and events going on and the or organ was always the center of it. And then the, the one thing that really hooked me though was the uh, first time my parents did take me to the Thomason Opera House and I heard my first concert. I don't remember who the artist was at the time but all I remember was as soon as I heard the organ start playing I looked at my folks and they said that is so cool I want to do that. And uh, since then um, family friends of ours I started taking piano lessons from from them as well as her husband was also the organist at the uh, congregational church in Newtown and so he started teaching me um, about the organ and he also had a Tenray Hall organ in the in their farmhouse where they lived so I've uh, started the started the music career at the young age <laughs> like probably most kids do well how old are you now just so when we do this again in future years we can make a comparison I'm uh, 39 this year okay because I forget how old you were when I first met you, but it was a long time ago. It was the first time we met. <laughs> yeah, I've known you since the first time I met. You're stealing my lines. <laughs> well, when was the first, quote, public, not chapter meetings or something, when was the first public program you did? first public program I did was actually in 1994, um, right after I had won the um, hobbyist division competition for ATOS. Uh, in my first year as a member with ATOS and I was still in college at the time and I was actually studying classical organ at the University of Connecticut and so my chapter actually offered me to uh, a scholarship concert to play at the Thomaston Opera House and uh, all the uh, ticket sales proceeds uh, went to me as a scholarship to use for my school. Good. Now, are you in the technical side of this? I mean, do you maintain them, or are you just? I me, mean, it's all I can do to play them. Yeah, I'm. I'm just more of the player. I'm not so much the techie um, that fixes them or gets involved with that side of the organ. I have good uh, knowledge and ideas of how all the stuff works, but I really don't have any hands-on experience working with them. I, I just find playing playing them is is really what is my uh, my passion. Well, what would be the place, what, what's your ultimate goal of some place, some organ, something to do whenever you can get a chance? I mean, some great place, some terrific organ, that you, that obviously that you haven't played. Exactly. Um, I would actually, I would love the chance to be able to sit down to uh, Jasper's organ sometime to see what to see what it would be like to play that instrument. Now, uh, for those that don't know what that is, that's the San Filippo uh, organ in Barrington, Illinois. Eighty ranks, I believe, is five manuals. Wilson, because I've never. It's funny, I've never really sat down to an, an organ of that size. Everything I've played has really been more on the small size of really between fifteen, eighteen ranks, and then maybe. Uh, you know, a few ten rankers, and then a couple of times I did get to play the Alabama Wurlitzer, of course, which is twenty nine, and then also the the 
Rialto Barton, which is, what, 21? Mm -hmm. But the bulk of the stuff I've played has actually really been on the small side, so to really actually to sit down to a, a, an instrument of that size would be very interesting to, to see how you attack and approach registry, registering an instrument of that magnitude. So once you've done that, that's the end of the line? No, no, that's just one of the things that I'd like to try someday. Um, I fortunately did get to also play the Woolsey Hall organ with the New Haven Symphony, so that was that was quite a uh, quite a memorable evening, especially with the fact that uh, Skitch Henderson was the guest conductor that evening. Okay, what would be your you're young enough yet? What would be your advice to young people coming into this thing? Uh, not even not necessarily playing yet, but what would be your your comment about encouraging them to be interested in theater organ or organ at all? I was I would basically say that people that have a, a love for music or the arts, um, it, it, they would be easier to kind of steer in the direction to bring them to concerts like this most of the I just say most of the young generation doesn't even know something less like this exists and they don't they're never really exposed to music like this in the household either um, but the few that do get exposed to it um, to keep them going it has to be a positive thing and, and um, one thing that I would say is if they do want to try it is they should be get up there and, and do their best and, and don't worry about what other people think because the, the problem is there's too much criticism out there and I think that's what shies a lot of people away from people furthering their musical talents especially towards the theater organ. Okay, you've been a member of ATOS a long time, gone to a lot of conventions. What do you think is the, oh, how can I put it, the one thing that needs to be improved, the one downfall, the, the one thing that distur <coughs> disturbs you most in in what we're trying to achieve by saving the organ. The, where, where ATOS and all of its membership could focus their attention to, to fix. Uh, wow, that's a... <laughs> well, I told you this wasn't going to be easy. No, you, you told me it was going to be easy. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's easy. Wow. Um... Well, I mean, you, you know, don't have to. I, you know, because because I don't, I just see, like all I know of ATOS is just what I see really from conventions. Um, I I don't know the inner workings or of how things work. Would you ever want to be on the board of directors? I would probably want to maybe see or sit through a meeting to see what happens. Then first. you'll never do it. Yeah, exactly. Probably. <laughs> Um, I have been president of our own local chapter a few times, and that in itself is it, it, it's probably not as much work as being on the board, but it, it's enough work that it, it, it's almost like having another part-time job, uh, keeping everything going. But all I can say is from what I've seen in the conventions, you know, it's I, I don't really know what the what ATOS is working on in the background, so I, I honestly couldn't know what the what their focus is unless I was clued in anyway well okay Juan we uh, Juan Cardona we've uh, enjoyed having you here and uh, to, just a reminder today is the 2nd of July almost the 3rd of July oh my it's close to uh, midnight here and we're in Providence Rhode Island and we appreciate your time any last comments you want to make I just say for anybody who's out there playing theater organ Keep it up and uh, just let your creativity fly because that's what it's all about. Thanks, Juan. Jack Moman, uh, we'll see you all at the next time. Thank you, Jack. <laughs>